Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to another episode. In this one, I'd like to discuss a little bit about uh, inhalers such as serotide and weight gain, because this is something that apparently people are worried about. And I'll go straight to the comment that I received, to read you the comment, because I think that gives us a, a bit of a context that's real. I always like to start these videos by going through the comment list. Thank you for sending me your questions. It gives me a real perspective on what I should be discussing in these videos. So I really, really appreciate that. And let, let's just get right into it. So basically this one, uh, thank you for your videos. I've lived with my airways closing daily for about 10 years. My question is if serotide has anything to do with weight gain. I've heard people say inhalers make you fat, but not sure about serotide, my best. So thank you, uh, Onyx uh, COG, so for dropping this comment. It is indeed a big, big issue. And I think there's more than just the inhaler itself to discuss here, but let's start with the inhaler. So basically, what is in serotide? What is in serotide that might make us gain weight? So this type of inhaler contains two types of medication inside. So it's a combination inhaler. It, it's a very well known inhaler has been used for, you know, probably 10, 15 more than that uh, years. So it contains a bronchodilator, which is something called salmeterol, which is basically just a medication that keeps the airways open, helps you breathe a little bit better. It's effective, it lasts for about 12 hours, then you probably need another dose to, to get that uh, bronchodilator effect, that effect of helping you breathe better. But also at the same time that you're inhaling that bronchodilator, you're also inhaling a very low dose of corticosteroids, inhaled corticosteroids. So this is an anti-inflammatory medication. In this case, it's something called fluticasone. Now, the dose of fluticasone, the dose of the corticosteroid that you're inhaling in one of these is very, very low. So I have to underline that fact. Generally, the dose of fluticasone of this inhaled corticosteroid in a serotide inhaler ranges from between 50 to 500 micrograms per dose. So, so this is generally well, micrograms, think about it that way. Let's, let's, let's think about a tablet of prednisone. This is an oral tablet of corticosteroids that you would take. You would swallow, it would dissolve in your body, how it cause an anti-inflammatory effect. The lowest strength uh, tablet that most people are prescribed when they're taking oral corticosteroids is five milligrams. So, so that's at least 10 times as much uh, as you would have in the highest strength Symbicort. Now, obviously the equivalence is not exactly the same because it's a different type of corticosteroid, but one can, can see that basically if your a tablet contains at least 10 times as much corticosteroid than an inhaler, you can imagine that taking oral corticosteroids may indeed cause some side effects. Well, this is unlikely to cause that side effect. And generally it is considered that unless you're inhaling a dose equivalent that is at least 1000 micrograms a day, so that's one milligram, it's unlikely that the corticosteroid that you inhale in the airways will actually get absorbed into the rest of the body. So obviously there may be a mild level of absorption, but to what extent it's very hard to predict and it's likely to be very, very low. Would this be enough to cause weight gain? My personal opinion is no. I think this is unlikely Although everyone is different, so some people may have a more uh, intense response to these inhaled corticosteroids than others, because every, every single person is slightly different. So of course, not knowing your particular um, characteristics, how you've responded to medication in the past, it's very hard for me to tell you specifically in your case whether uh, this may be linked to weight gain or not. But I would say in the vast majority of cases, taking an inhaler correctly probably won't lead to weight gain it's more likely actually that by controlling your inhaled, your, your breathing problem better, you're more likely to prevent weight gain. Because imagine if someone is suffering from asthma, let's say, and they're using serotide to control their asthma. If they have well-controlled asthma, they'll be able to exercise. They'll be able to work. They'll be able to live their lives as normal. So that would mean that they will be able to maintain an active lifestyle, something that we all strive for, especially in today's world, when everyone's working, sitting down at desks, sitting on the sofa, doing these sort of sedentary activities. So if you have a well-controlled airways disease, because you're taking a low dose of steroids, you may actually be doing more to have a better overall health. And what happens is, 
I think in many situations, people who do suffer with respiratory disease, with chronic respiratory problems, they end up doing less and less exercise because they are breathless. And this has been my experience so far. So if you are doing less and less because your breathing problem is not well controlled, your body becomes deconditioned. The less you exercise you do, well, the less your body needs those respiratory muscles. So they will atrophy to some extent. And then that makes you more breathless when you're actually trying to do some exercise. And that leads to this visual circle that I've mentioned in many videos that I think is really, really damaging. And a lot of people do not really recognize how important deconditioning is in you know, the degradation of respiratory symptoms in someone with chronic respiratory disease. So I think it's a major, major problem. But I, I just wanted to touch upon this fact that I think there's a lot of misconceptions about what inhalers do. And I think overall, they're very safe medications. It's very, very rare that we see the side effects that may be listed on uh, the package insert on the leaflet that comes with the medication when you purchase it from the pharmacy. So overall, they're very safe medications. And actually, inhalers are probably one of the safest ways of administering medication. If you think about tablets, generally, we need to take a tablet that has a sufficient strength to reach the organ in which we're intending to treat. So if we're taking a tablet of corticosteroids, for example, we need to give a high enough dose so that when the tablet dissolves into the body's fluids, it reaches the lungs, for example, in a sufficient concentration to actually treat the condition that we're trying to treat. Whereas if we're inhaling the medication from the other side directly to the airways which are affected by the respiratory condition, we don't need as high a dose. We need very little medication because we can achieve the same concentration with much less medication. So we can treat the airways more specifically. So this is why topical treatments such as, well, topical is a little bit, I'm, I think I'm adapting that, uh, that term from when you're using, for example, an ointment for some kind of a skin condition. You're applying the treatment directly to the affected area. And more or less, you're doing the same when you're breathing something in. So if you're inhaling the medication straight to the airways, you are basically treating it locally. You're trying to prevent absorption to the rest of the body, trying to use the minimal amount of medication where it needs to act. The main thing about inhalers, though, I would say, is to achieve a good effect, you need to have good inhaler technique. So this is valid for serotide. It's valid for other inhalers as well, not only serotide. The better you use your inhaler, the better you will control your respiratory condition with less doses. So imagine if you are taking the inhaler incorrectly, some of the medication won't reach the deeper parts of the lungs. They will, that, some of that powder, some of the, the aerosol that the inhaler generates will just rest in the upper airways. If that's the case, you know, you may need to take more of it. Your doctor may think that, well, it's not effective in your case, so you actually need to double your dose. So for example, you'd be taking more of the medication. That can happen. So I would really, really recommend each time you go for a consultation with your doctor, with your you know, nurse, pharmacist, healthcare provider, try to take, bring your inhaler with you, take it with you to the consultation and actually show your healthcare provider how you are using it because that's a great opportunity to receive some positive, constructive feedback on how to use it better. Because if you use it better, you may need less of it. And the, the final thing is, if you're using inhalers that contain corticosteroids, inhaled corticosteroids, one thing you can do to reduce the total number of corticosteroid that you're ingesting is after you've inhaled the medication as correctly as you could, try to just take a glass of water, swish the water around, you know, take a sip of water, gargle, gargle the water, gargle, gargle, rinse your mouth and spit that water out because that will just clear away some of that powder that's been left in your mouth and upper airways up in your throat. That's one way to reduce the total no amount of medication that you've taken, but hasn't really reached the airways because we only want the medication to reach deep inside the airways. We don't really need it to be in the throat. That actually can cause side effects. The vocal cords may become slightly inflamed, irritated. So these are ways to minimize the side effects of these medications, which are fantastic, actually. For most people, taking inhalers has been a really, really positive experience. They have improved their health dramatically. They have managed to control conditions that otherwise would have been very, very difficult to, to get hold of, to, to have a normal life with. So you now have actually conditions like asthma, 
where most people have an absolutely normal life. Even though they have to bear the burden of having asthma, they may have the occasional attack, but having good chronic treatment with inhalers has actually led to a lot of progress in these conditions. So, of course, weight gain is always an issue, but always try to think about other alternative explanations. I'm not sure if the inhaler can explain everything. The, the conditioning itself, so your body weakening because of doing less and less exercise can be a more significant cause of weight gain, I would say, than the inhaler. Even though, you know, the inhaler may contribute some percent of the weight gain, let's say, worst case scenario. But there may be other issues going on. You know, there may be other conditions which have appeared that have led you to become um, not as healthy. Is your diet the way it should be? Are you really eating a good, healthy diet? This is, these are things that you really should explore. Are you eating the right amount of calories? Should you maybe count the calories that you're eating in a given day? Because there's no way to gain weight unless you are eating slightly more than what your body needs. And this is something that's really, really hard to explain in a face-to-face -face consultation. I will tell you from experience. It's easy for me to tell you in a video or in an episode, in a podcast episode. But in real life, when doctors talk to patients, it's really, really hard to sometimes, you know, for obvious reasons to, to breach these difficult topics and to talk about weight gain, you know, getting fat from <laughs> medications, from eating too much. And it's, it's something that I, I don't want to offend anyone. I'm just saying we all need to be very mindful of what we're eating because at the end of the day, it's that saying, we are what we eat. So counting the calories that we eat. Most packages, if you any food product generally has some indication on the back of the package. You might read how many calories you get per serving, per 100 grams, per things like that. So keeping track of that for maybe a week and see how many calories you're really using, that can actually go much further than actually looking for all kinds of other causes just keeping track of what you're eating how much you're eating are you eating some some fiber as well are you you know these sort of things are really really important and then try to match that with the amount of exercise and activity that you're doing if you're having a very very intense job maybe you are you need more calories because you know your brain will use a lot of calories if you have a very stressful job or if you're working physically if you're working construction carrying heavy weights of course you will need more calories but then what happens sometimes is that you've got lots of people who were used to have these type of very very heavy jobs and then once they got the respiratory condition because it's not really as well controlled they've suddenly stopped doing as much exercise and physical activity as they used to do before and they are eating the same way you know so someone who has been playing rugby or <laughs> football soccer whatever gets respiratory disease but they continue eating as if they're still playing and that leads to weight gain and this is something that has been seen a lot and at that point we are tempted to just blame the inhaler or to blame some other medication but actually it's a matter of really balancing your body's needs to you know how much you are actually taking in i'm not saying this doesn't play a role it can lead to potentially you know to some extent a little bit of water retention it can lead to some some of these things that may contribute to the weight gain but i would imagine that it's in a mi minority of cases that this is actually clinically significant in most cases with inhalers the effect is potentially very, very small. And there are other compounding factors that really happen at the same time that lead to weight gain. So I hope this perspective was useful. Um, I hope it's reassuring that if you do take the inhalers correctly, you may actually control your respiratory condition well. You may be able to do more. You may be able to, to have a healthier life overall. So yeah, just it's, it's one of those questions that really you know, I, uh, it drew my attention because it's something that I, I feel many patients will actually hear about. There are a lot of rumors online. Oh, the inhaler is doing this and that. You know, there may be forums you may be reading. You know, a friend may mention, oh, I've got, I started this inhaler and I, I really uh, gained a lot of weight after that. And in that person's case, there could have been something else going on not only the inhaler but these sort of rumors are easy to spread <laughs> so i think it's important to talk to your doctor in your case see exactly what's going on see 
what's the situation in your case if you need to see a dietitian if you need some help with your diet with your exercise some physiotherapy these things may actually help a lot a lot thank you very much for watching and please leave comments on the youtube channel if you have further questions i really like to create these videos for you and i hope you'll have a good health thank you very much all the best